Amen. We're going to look at the Word of God and see what the Word of God has to say to us tonight. Amen. Genesis chapter 7. Genesis chapter 7. And, uh, anybody know our monthly theme? Family. Ah, all in the family, baby. Yeah. And we're this month, we're focused on the family. Amen. That's my ode to Dr. James Dobson. Amen. A hero of mine who taught me so much, kept me married, ministered unto me. Amen. Hallelujah. I call it the gospel of Dr. Dobson. Amen. Uh, we're going to look at Genesis um, chapter 7. And then we're going to begin to look um, at verse 1. We're going to start reading verse 1. And I'll see where I'm going to stop. And the Bible reads, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou in all of thy house into the ark. For, for, um, for thee have I seen righteous, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven, the male and his female. And of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also of the air by, by sevens, the male and his female, to keep, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every, and every living substance that I have made, I will destroy from the face of the earth. Verse 5. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and the reading of his word. Hallelujah. Um, tonight we're gonna we're gonna talk about the family, Amen. I'm simply just gonna call it the family. Um, we're, we're looking. At, the reason why I chose this particular part passage, there are different places I could have went to to give you the idea of the family, but this is the first time that the that the word um, for house or family was used, you know, and it was it was to save the world. Think how important families are. That we, we, we look at God choosing Noah to build the ark, but to be more specific and direct, because he didn't build the whole thing himself by hand. He hired people out, you know, to, to help assist him in the building of it. But what he could not hire people out was to build his family. And God used a family, and God wants to use families to save the world. You know, God's focus point, focal point is the family. And um, as I read here in verse 1, it says in the, chapter 7, verse 1, it says, And the Lord God said unto Noah, Come thou in all thy house unto the ark. That, that's the, the, the Hebrew word, that word house is the word bayith or bayith. Uh, but it, it, it should be pronounced bayith. And it's B-A-Y-I-T-H, bayith. And, and it, means, um, it means your household, you know, it means your family, you know, and, and, and strangely so, this is a family as, as come, that comes through daughters, you know, um, but it's talking about your family. It, it talks about the door to your family. That's why you're talking about daughters, you know, the, the door, you know, to your family, um, and where the greatness of your home is born. And this is all in that word by yeath. That, that God said, I, I want you to bring in your family. And your family is going to save the world. Now, what's amazing about this is that he wasn't just talking about um, uh, mankind. He was talking about all kind. Because when he talked about families, then he went into the sevens of the creatures that he should bring in. And he says, 
bringing the male in his in, in what well, it says um in, in his female, you know, and he's thinking the whole concept of families and, and the whole thing that God is is doing um and and saving Noah is that he's saving a family who will save families who will save families who will save families. That's the whole idea about Noah built his family. Now, if you know anything, uh, well, um, tradition tells us about Noah, that Noah was a builder. He was an engineer by trade. And Noah built several things um, that, to benefit his community. And he used his family to be um, his, his craftsmen to build all these things that benefited his community. You know, this is some of the, 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 the non-biblical history of, of, of Noah. And um, Noah bettered his community by um, using his family to better the community around him. Amen. This, this word family is where, is where we come from. It's the root uh, and the essence of who we are. And um, it's, it's a place of, of our moral compass and our values and our faith are all poured into this word. Amen. That we build up ourselves to, to, to then better the world around us. Noah had been spending time teaching his sons and his daughters how to, how to handle animals, you know, how to um, um, deal in carpentry, you know, um, and, and all the things that were in agriculture and all the things that was necessary for them to survive long before the flood came. Now, listen to this. Noah was 600 years old when God gave this word to him. I am not one that believes that Noah only had three sons in 600 years. But in building of his family, sure, some, some, of the, some people passed away, and you know, I'm sure there were different things that happened. Um, but over this time period, you know, um, were all of his sons on board that way? You know, some of them may have been pe part of the people that built the ark. You know, and help build the ark and establish the grounds and the territory. Now, Hebrew tradition tells us that Noah invented the plow. And he taught agriculture and he taught how to use the mule and the plow to dig up territories and, and, and dig up um, the dirt, the earth, you know, to plant seed and, and, and um, um, cultivate grounds. You know, that he was the one that gave that idea and, and he perfected that idea before man. But he used his family to build the tools to, to bring that perfected idea to the table. We're talking about families. And as, as I see Noah, when I, when I read the scripture, all this is in my mind as I'm reading Genesis um, chapter 7 and beginning at verse 1. That, that what God is telling Noah to do is to take all that you have built yourself, all that you put your hand to, your family, and build this ark that's going to save all of mankind. Take all of what you have put your life into and use it as a shelter, amen, to the rest of mankind. You, use it as, as, a, as a rallying place to draw in the animals of all kind. Hallelujah. And bring in birds of all kind. You know, bring in the rep reptiles of all kind. You know, and bring them all into the ark. And what you have put your hands to, I'm going to bless to save all mankind. I'm talking about your family. See, the greatest gift you're going to give to your world, and, and this, the, the Hebrew words for family, you know, they, 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 they can get, you know, pretty, pretty deep, you know, and, and, and um, they're very specific. But uh, this word uh, t tonight, um, what, what God is telling Noah is to bring all that he's worked on and built himself that no one else was responsible for building is what he had to do. Now, sure, there are people that we know that that Methuselah, you know, um, saw him, probably saw him born, or lived in his birth in his early years, and, and had a and had a, a hand and you know um, directing his life and everything. And there are different. Adam um, lived up to see his birth. Methuselah died right when the when the um, when the floods came, and so. Um, it's amazing all the influence that he had in his life. But, um, but, but Noah, if you count the years, Noah and what he built was an extension of what Adam built. I'm talking about families. 
that, that he took all this information that he got from, from Adam and he, and he improved the world around him and improved on the world around him and enhanced the world around him. And then um, he used his children that, that he had built up and developed to be a, an enhancement to everyone and bless all men for all man t- for all time. Amen. We are here today because of Noah. We are here because one man decided to bless his family. But then it's another strange thing that happened, how God um, chooses people. The Bible says that God chose Abraham, and the Bible only gives us one reason why God chose Abraham. Because he would teach his children. Because he knew Abraham would build a family. And now from there, you have another Hebrew word that talks about being of the clan, of the tribe, you know, uh, uh, um, of, of Abraham. So um, in, 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 in Genesis chapter 7, it says, um, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou in all thy house into the ark. Now, he told him to bring all of his house into the ark. But what we read about is Noah, Mrs. Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives. But the commandment was to bring all of his house into the ark. And it seems that, that in, uh, in, in all of the raising of his children that he did, that there were ones that were particularly closer to him and had his heart and was willing to give themselves more to their father's vision. That's a beautiful thing. They, the sons that were willing to give their lives into his vision, into building what he's building, when it seems like there, there was no sense in doing it, when it seemed like there was no, no ultimate purpose in mind, it's going to rain. Pop's got an idea to build a big old boat. It's going to rain. What's rain? I have no idea. But dad said it's going to happen. And so we're going to build this big old boat. We're going to put all these animals in it. And they followed, they, they, they fell in line with, 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 with um, um, Noah's vision. And now in every church, or, or in traditional churches that are built, you, you have the beams that run across the top that, 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 that are to simulate the ark that Noah built and invited his family into. It's an ode unto Noah and the preaching of the word that saved his family, that will go from that ark into the whole world and save the world. It's an, it, it's, a, it's an ode to one man's faith to raise his family the right way. I just want to talk about family tonight. This, um, he says, in all, in, all thy, um, in all thy house into the ark. Um, and, 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 it's, and it's funny about this word ark. Um, um, it's the same word that Moses was put in. It's funny. Eh? Who would save all of God's children, all of God's people. It's amazing. Hallelujah. The, the, um, the, the usage of, and the idea behind this word ark. But he says, bring your house into the ark. That's what we do when bring our families to church. For, um, for thee have I seen um, have I seen righteousness before me in this generation? So out of all these families, you have a particular level of righteousness. And he goes, and he goes into how he needs to save all the beasts, amen, of the field. And he, he won't need to um, serve, um, save the birds and save the world around him, amen, through this ark that he was building. And when we're building, we're building our families, Amen. We have to build our families in a way that our families can also be a shelter unto those that are around them. We're building our family. See, and, and then we bring we bring our families together, and they cover one another. Amen. And they see the unity, and they see the communion, and they see the oneness, and they see the togetherness. This word "family" is is is, is a is a powerful word. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at it um, um, again. Uh, another word for this word family. Um, uh, another usage of this word um, family. Another word in the Hebrew that's used to say family is the word bayit. Now, this is um, a more of a, of a general family. 
this is more when it's talking about uh, of a of your household, but being a part of a, a bigger community. You know, th this is a this is a family um, that's a part of a bigger family. And you know, when God had the when God had the children of Israel all align themselves, it, it's amazing. Do you know He had them align themselves according to their families, according to their tribes, according to their bayi? He had them all align themselves according to their their own. Um, um, gene genealogy and he, the whole idea is that you're always a part of something bigger and our families need to know that they are a part of something bigger that they, they need to all know that see there's a, there's, a, there's a time when your family come together to celebrate the things that your family has done the things that are particular and specific about your family and how God has used your family and what God is doing in your family and how your uncle or your, your great uncle and your great aunt and your great great grandfather and their contribution to the things of God. This is what this is, this is telling us to do. This is what we get from, from this word by ye, that we need to all come together as the family of God and then come together as individual families to celebrate and to recognize what God has done through our particular genealogy. And so there's a bigger picture. And our children need to know that they are a part of a bigger picture. That they are growing into something bigger and greater. That they're not out on the island doing their own thing and experimenting with their lives. See, that they, but their lives have a purpose, and that purpose has been established by what God has done and is doing in your family. Amen. See, all of our families should have a sense of, we're special. God is doing something special in us. I'm carrying on something special before God. And I am a part of something that God has preserved to be carried on as special. And then now I have a responsibility to re reproduce myself. To carry on that thing, what God is doing, which is to expand the tents and build a household. Amen. See, those same morals, those same values. Now you, you would have thought that this word would show up a lot earlier in, in, in the Bible, you would think that th this, this word would be something that, that maybe Adam was throwing around or, you know, that was very early on, uh, you know, um, used. But it wasn't. I believe the first time that, that this word is used is in the book of Numbers. In, in the book of Numbers, um, chapter 20. And I'm beginning to read in verse 1. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or the stranger, the soldier in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. And I will set my face against that man, and I will cut him off from among his people because he has given of his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name and if the people of the land do any way hide their eyes from the man when he giveth of his seed unto Molech and kill him not then will I set my face against that man and against his by ye And verse 5, Leviticus, Leviticus 20. Did I say Leviticus? I said number. So y'all should have known I'm in Leviticus. I mean, y'all got to be in the spirit, man. I mean, <laughs> right. For sure, it was a number. <laughs> Amen. Leviticus. Hallelujah. That was a test, y'all. Just making sure. Amen. <laughs> y'all pay attention. Amen. Leviticus um, chapter 20. All right. Amen. Um, verse five. Now I'm in verse five. And he said, um, then I will set my face against that man and against 
his family and will cut him off and all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. Now, um, now, now Molech was this was this um, this bird, this owl, this this symbol that that the, the children of Israel um, began to worship, you know, and this this figure that they began to um, worship demanded that they sacrifice their children unto him, and give their children to give their house to build the house of Molech. And the Bible calls that going a whoring after other gods. You're teaching your children how to be a spiritual whore. And, and, and God said that not only am I going to destroy that man, but I'm going to destroy his whole entire tribe. I'm going to treat him like a cancer that cannot be tolerated. I'm going to eliminate him. And, and the offense is so high on the God. You know, why? Because God said, we are a covenant, and you're giving your seed to build the enemy. Now, this is, this is something I believe there are doctrines that are going forward today um, that are very much so in alignment with um, supporting Molech with their seed. People raising their children, people in the church, saying that my child has to be a ruler in Hollywood. So I'm going to raise my, my daughter, you know, to be a part of, you know, um, um, the hip-hop culture so she can be the best hip-hop dancer, and the best hip-hop artist or whatever, and, and so she can rise to the top of that culture. And, and, and then she can, you know, um, then when she gets to the top of that culture, she can preach Jesus to the best of those people in that culture. You know, I'm going to have my son, you know, be a part of the, this, this, this hip-hop culture they can rise, so they can rise to the top of this culture. That, that's giving your seed to Molech. And, and the, the, the attraction of it is, well, the permission of it, when, you, when, when, when it's permitted by a tribe to go forward unchallenged, others begin to look on and be inspired by it. And then it begins to contaminate all of the tribe and all of that household. And everyone begins to take on that nature. What's going on in, in the world today is that so many um, places that call themselves the house of worship are, are really worshiping Molech. They're really trying to, to, to move to the top of this, this industry, you know, and, 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 and be seen as something by the world and recognized by the world. And so they change the, the style of music. They change the, the style of dress. They change the, 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 uh, the, the language and the Bibles that they use and everything to, to be more relevant to the world and on this slippery slope they end up worshiping Molech. There are Bibles that have been written to be more hip hop. Their are version and, and the stuff I got into it one time thinking oh man this is pretty small. I like this. Yeah. And then I get to reading it and be like whoa okay that ain't right. You know. It's it's like it's like um, I, I was talking to someone, and um, I was telling them about an organization that they work for, and the organization they work for is a, is a higher up um, organization in the in the protest world and the rally world and all that kind of stuff. And um, and she said that the, the the CEO of their company gave everybody in their company a book to read, and. Um, uh, and was talking to everybody about the book, and they had you know this camp you know thing. They went out there, they talked about it, and you know talked about community organizing and all that kind of stuff. And the name of the book is called Rules for Radicals. Oh. Wow. And do you know who that book is dedicated unto? The original radical, they called him Satan, Lucifer. It's a book dedicated unto Lucifer. Now, what is what is that what is that CEO a part of? He's a, he's a part of a family, a tribe, a kind that's infected with an ideology 
that's sacrificing the people under his tutelage unto Molech. See, this, this is, I want you to understand secularism. I want you to understand this is what secularism is. This is what secularism does. This is why you try to keep it far from you. This is why you stand against it. This is how you regulate your heart. Because secularism will get you back into bondage, back into, what's that, misfara, um, back into Egypt, back into the land of, of bondage, and, and back into worshiping Molech. See? And so, all right. But, but, but here's where we find that, that, that word used for the first time, by Yith. And um, when it's used... Um, it is used to describe the people that God was going to cut off. So these people were connected by this oath. They were connected by this um, band and this ideology, you know, and, and the Bible uses it as, as a family, as a part of a, 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 a cult tribe, you know. And, and that's how it was used in, in, this, in this sense, in this time, in this moment here. But we are not building that kind of a tribe. We're part of the family of God. And Jesus, and Jesus um, expressed that when he said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Except him that does the will of the Father that sent me. See, this says that our family has to extend beyond our DNA. It has to extend beyond those who look like us and have the same tribal markings as us. And it has to extend into those, all men everywhere, who are willing to do the will of God. I'm talking about the family. When Noah was building his family, it started off as a, a smaller group, a smaller intimate group, but it grew into the families of the earth that, that, were, that were sanctified, that were set apart, amen, to do the will of God for all people for all time. We are here because of that consecration. <coughs> amen. Um, I, I want to see how, how many Hebrew words I want to go. Ah, uh, okay. I'm not going to go through no, any more Hebrew words on family. Hallelujah. But it also um, um, talks about your household. When the Bible says that when you are saved, then you and your whole household should be saved. You get that idea from Acts 20. Amen. And when Paul um, ministered unto the jailer, you and your entire household will be saved. What is he saying? He's saying that what we ought to do in our homes, we ought to go to our homes and first, we ought to build our arcs at home. Amen. We ought to have our family devotions at home. We ought to have our times of prayer at home. We ought to have an atmosphere fit for God to move that could withstand all the pressures of the world and not be corrupted by them. Amen. And, 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 and we ought to gather in our home, uh, amen, um, the, the people that are like us, hallelujah, that, 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 that are, are part of our tribe and, and build us for the, for the point and for the purpose of saving the rest of the world. We're not being isolated for the point of saying, us four no more, my tribe, you know, forget all y'all, you know. No, we come together to be built up, to be unified, to be strengthened, that when we get out of this ark, we are prepared to save the entire world. This is a, a greater overarching idea about family. And so when we're starting a family, we're not just starting a place for us to have our personal happiness. Though we hope to have some personal happiness. Amen. Amen. We're not just um, having a start when we begin a household and begin to develop our own household. It's not for the singular purpose of, you know, having a place just to raise your kids or, you know, having a place to uh, um, to meet with your your wife or with your husband, or whatever, you know. But it's for the purpose of developing something in there that that will withstand all the pressures of the world outside and can possibly save all of Humanity. Our families or families are the, the calling of God. They are the heartbeat of God. To the extent that God calls himself Father. It's the heart of God. 
What he he could have he he could have just called himself God. And that says enough. But he says no. I I I'm a progenitor. I build. I extend myself. And out of our Father came a Savior. God built His house to save mankind. God built his house to give the world something that will bring salvation to it. That will stand against all the secularism. It will not be sacrificed unto Molech. But it will stand against those pressures and be something great in the name of that God. And go forward and make a mark on their generations that cannot be erased in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, bless the Lord with a clap offering. Hallelujah.